Good luck. Oh, look at that. I get to go first. Let's play Old Faithful here. So note, do not open the diagonal with this 5-3 square or 5-7 undefended. I've done that before. Lately I've been doing this move order, so it helps me remember not to like expose this square um, accidentally. Oh yeah, so I was watching, yeah, seeing this pawn highlighted, I was watching, uh, what was it, Muranaka and or Hidechi? I think lately... Muranaka's latest video explains some of the crazy complications which happen in the event that this pawn pushes three times and this bishop exchange is still left as an option. Um, I think the line is something different, but um, yeah, no, he does explain some of these complications and goes into like what's so risky about. Um, uh, if this player tries to win on the file directly. All right, we've got a Temple Lost Bishop Exchange opening. I have to admit, um, this is going to be a teaching game for both of us. I don't know how much either, like, I know I've watched Hidechi's videos on Bishop Exchange. I've watched Muranaka's video about the Temple Lost Bishop Exchange. Um, am I going to remember all of it just from having watched a video? Probably not. So this is why we play um, and see if we can learn from each game. One thing I have noticed uh, just from watching handicap games and... Um, I guess I have participated in one handicap game. No, I've participated in multiple. A general can defend three pawns at a time. This is not even a proverb, but it probably should be. Um, so it's worthy of note that if I shift this silver up one, there is suddenly an area to drop bishop back behind my pawn wall. So if I'm going to castle uh, to the right, um, then it behooves me to move my king over into where the king belongs and then move up the silver. Um, I could also have done rook takes, and then if this bishop drop occurs... Um, it would have been possible. I don't know if it's possible or not. I thought it is to do a bishop drop over here. And the idea is that the bishop can't retreat to the left because of my pawns and because of this pawn, and the bishop can't retreat to the right because my um, bishop would have all these squares covered. So you'd see bishop takes bishop, gold takes to cover this square. Instead, I think I've taken us, well, I would say into Temple Lost Bishop Exchange, except I've lost a tempo playing my rook to the center file. So we're in some weird opening now, which I think I'm okay with this. Um, worthy of note is that if this rook moves to quite a few different places, um, I could play the bishop here fork, hitting where this has opened up, and as well as the square. So I'm not totally sure how uh, Gota plays this. Also worthy of note is like I like pushing the center pawn and just seeing where it ends up. My king is in kind of an odd spot for me to do that at the moment, but um, in general this could be an interesting idea. Maybe what they're reading is uh, bishop drop 5-4. Um, and then maybe bishop drop back here. I don't know. Maybe I'm okay giving up this pawn. 
or this one even. Yeah, I think I've taken us into very deep into uncharted waters. Um, and unintentionally. Yes, this center bishop drop. Uh, the biggest threat is that they take this pawn. My generals cover everything in this local vicinity, so... If I push my center pawn and bishop takes, and I move, or I drop a bishop somewhere out here, um, then I'm attacking here, and they offer, or they exchange bishops at that point. Uh, I still don't have my rook covering stuff from the center if it's back here, though. Um, so yeah, if they drop on 5-4, one idea is pushing the center pawn, one idea is moving up the silver, just sacking this out here. Uh, even if I push the center pawn, they could take here anyway. Um, and I'm not sure where that ends up. Also, if they drop 5-4, I could drop a bishop, and they take, and I take, and then they can drop a whole lot of places. I think any bishop drop they have is more effective than any one that I can make. And I'm just more worried about that bishop promoting and I'm not so worried about anything else, I guess. Yeah, so like, yeah, 5 4, silver up, bishop takes pawn, gold up, and I just pretend like nothing's happened. And I have a bishop in hand, and they have a bishop up here. And then my silver starts climbing. It could be interesting. Okay, so they stave off some of the madness. Um, now if I push my center pawn, they drop right here, forking two pawns that I cannot defend. So, I think the most effective way to deal with most of the bishop drops is to play what we're going to play normally anyway. Um, so this covers the rear two pawns here. They still can drop a bishop in the center, transposing back to that line we were just looking at. I would spend a lot more time reading these variations, not just on my opponent's time, but on my own time. But um, in this case, like I think it's a lost cause for me trying to figure this out. And so rather than dealing with the crazy branching factor, uh, in chess there's a branching factor on average of six. Um, you can find that engines that operate efficiently typically look at six candidate moves per iteration or per depth. Um, so if you're looking one move deep, you'll find six candidate moves. You're looking two moves deep for each of those six moves, you'll find six candidate moves. And the engine looks at a lot more than that, but in terms of things that it deeply looks at, it looks at about six. And some of those it looks at deeper than others. But yeah, you'll find both for engines and strong players in chess they look about six moves per position um, and deeply consider them here in shogi because of the drop rule there's a lot of candidate moves per position there's like way 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 too many candidate moves to look at it's an unnavigable forest so that's why i'm not trying to solve the opening here as much as I really want to, as much as like I've deeply looked at things in previous games, this just looks hopeless to solve. Um, if they indeed they do anything other than a bishop drop, I think I climb the silver, and I can deal with almost every threat to my position. Yeah, so I don't see any bishop drops that are decisive if I move my silver up. <sighs> And they've likewise dealt with quite a few attacking ideas that I could potentially have had. 
Um, so this looks like an effective square for my silver. Let's just put it out there. And next, we'll get the king over to the right. Of interest, now that I'm noticing it, is if this rook weren't here, we could push this pawn and bring the silver up and to the left and tuck the king in to the left and call it Yagra. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I've not played Yagra before, and now is probably not the time to try busting it out. Um, but yeah, that would be an interesting transposition for sure. Uh, okay. So, yeah, if I do bishop drop here, they do bishop drop there. For a second there, I was wondering, like, what? What is this? And no, that it's actually okay. So, yeah, I think I just mind my own business and continue castling. And incidentally, I guess because, well, I haven't pushed my third foul pawn, so I don't have the same idea, do I? All right, they've built either Mino or Fuji or whatever, depending on whether the king tucks itself in or not. Um, let's, okay, finally deal with the bishop drop. And now the head of my castle is safe-ish. This is so weird. So I've got two generals just sitting out here to the left. And I have not finished castling yet. I'd rather have this general on the right half of the board trying to attack something. That makes sense. It's a good, sensible idea. Um, let's get the king out of harm's way. And complete the castle. Here it might not matter so much, because I don't really anticipate a rook attack from the left. But in the event that an attack from the left does occur, we are ready. So, yeah, I've played several games when I have not built my castle like this, and bad things have happened. So, I other thing I should take in is that um, I've played several games recently where, including a handicap game, where I should have just built my castle out a bit more. Here it's really hard to do, because I've moved my gold to the other side to deal with all these drop ideas. So I've split my castle, and it's going to be hard for me to build it up. Um, but that still might be my best idea, despite being very difficult. Okay, I am sorely tempted to start attacking toward that point, but also my castle is completely not done, so let's build half Mino before considering anything too aggressive. Um, 
That's interesting. That is interesting. What the heck am I supposed to do here? Where's my move? Finding a move here is going to be hard. Let's play this back. This deals with some really annoying fork threats and enables to my gold to move back toward my castle. I mean, I guess what this does rule out is the possibility of shifting my rook to the right fourth hand file for now. Um, which should be fun, but I don't see a real effective way to pull it off. Um, I don't know that I want to push the edge pawn just yet. Like, yeah, there are some positions where bishop drop could be annoying, but that's just a nuisance as opposed to a real threat. We need my silver to be somewhere effective, and it's not going to be effective all the way back here. So I've blocked my fourth file pawn, and this is going to take some time to get my silver somewhere good, but um, we'll see what we can do. possibly worth considering is pushing um, my second foul pawn and if they push I take rook takes knight advances and the rook has to go away and then I drop a pawn um, on 2-5 and the rook's going to go back and they control the open file but I have a pawn there so I have some presence on that file and since I can consider stuff like this, uh, I think they have to push this pawn now. But um, I'm not really sure where that ends up. Like, here my pawn's kind of hanging. I guess I'm attacking impatiently again, which is not good. Or rather, which is a bad sign. Yeah, they're considering the second foul pawn push. Which might lure my silver back to where it was. I'm not sure. Or maybe I just do the bishop drop here. 
it's actually supporting a useful attack that's almost identical to attacks I had in previous games. With the king already on this diagonal. So I might have stumbled my way into something useful, after all. I mean, a bishop in hand is a fantastic thing, but this might be the perfect square to put it on. Okay, well, that's exciting. Especially in Biyami. It's not the move anybody wants to make. Um... So we could go back and look at that variation I just suggested. Pawn push, if pawn push, pawn takes, rook takes, knight, um, 3-3. Three, three. And their rook cannot immediately promote, so the rook has to move somewhere. I guess I should move here to 4. And I could drop a pawn, rook takes pawn, and I could bishop drop right in their camp, but it doesn't go anywhere. That's one option. Um... Hmm. Actually, no, my silver could go back. Then they do rook takes here, usurping my silver. That's complicated. Let's calm down a bit. All right. Like, I'm almost certain my only move here is to push the second foul pawn. I'm not seeing any other candidate moves that do anything interesting. But in the off chance that there is some other candidate move, I should try to find it. Um, I have had a previous game where I opened this diagonal, and my in Destiny did a bishop drop against me hitting the knight. Um... Maybe this kind of idea works here, too. If I bishop drop, I'm threatening to advance my silver and take this pawn. They could, in turn, drop a bishop, but then this... Well, that doesn't allow me to promote very easily. With difficulty, I can promote. Um, hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's so complicated. So complicated. I'd rather find some clean move here, but there's just not going to be one. Shogi's never that easy to have a single clean move. If I drop the bishop here, they move the knight out. And I attack and they just push the pawn up and I could take this pawn. Huh. What's going on here? If I play silver 5-5, five five, they either advance this pawn so I can't take it. Or... Hmm. Well, at some point they can defend this, too. Right, so the right way to initiate an attack is to push the fourth foul pawn, and then they advance their knight. And I have not caught them off guard. If I bring this up, they bring this silver up. Um, they've got everything defended. What gives? Why is this so complicated?
Man. Having a plan is better than having no plan, but... I'm not sure that my bad plans are worth having. Oh wait, the knight doesn't need to hit this. I could drop a bishop to hit this. That's not decisive, unless the silver is already up one. Um, okay, push the pawn, push the pawn, silver up, pawn takes, silver takes, pawn here. Yeah, it's not bright. Um, This is so freaking complicated. And ultimately, I'm just going to settle on the first move I saw anyway, or so it seems. I really don't know, but I just feel like pushing my second foul pawn is a mistake. And so I do want to inspire some aggression here. I don't know. I just felt it would be a terrible shame if I spent all that time thinking and then I played the most obvious move anyway. So we're going to play something that's not obvious and see how he responds. Right. So how does he defend this pawn? I guess he could use the rook to defend it.
Okay. I very much want to just move the knight and get this tension over with. That's what we're going to do. This gives my rook somewhere to go to. It's going to be okay. I mean, eventually I'm going to miss some stupid tactic somewhere anyway, but for now it's fine. Um, What's my big plan here? Do I have a plan? I wish I had a plan. My plan changes every move, depending on what my opponent does. That's not very much of a plan. Um, I just noticed this bishop drop back here. That's got me spooked a bit. I don't like this. I mean, this is a fine bishop drop. It gives up on the idea of trying to do some stupid bishop promotion on their side of the board, which is never going to happen anyway, because my opponent is awake and alert. Um, so... Like, we have to give our opponent some credit here. And here, the only way they can defend this is by lifting up their general, which actually transforms this into Yagura. So, like, what am I doing? I don't know. Um, I'm getting a complex position and making it even harder. That's what we're doing. I don't know why, but apparently that's what I'm up to. Um, And then we play the rook over, hopefully having defended against the opponent's bishop drop ideas, but I'm not really sure. And yeah, I'm not sure how to attack. Like my whole center file thing got shot down really hard. My silver and my pawn are in the wrong spaces. My bishop's on a good square. Um. It's actually kind of hard to dislodge the bishop. My castle kind of sucks. Um, so maybe I just focus on trying to bring my gold over toward the castle. Um... 
Yeah, so they get this in. Maybe I should try to open things, but then my gold is terribly misplaced. It's just unfortunate that I don't have any ideas. Anything I can do is met with something that... Well, if I don't push the pawn now, my, push my positions later will Thank suck you, when I try to push the pawn. On the other hand, if I do push and then we do knight takes, like I'm losing my knight. So... Hmm. There's a silver lining somewhere in all of this. I just don't see it. So finally we get a pawn in hand. The opponent still has bishop drops everywhere. But, um... So there's, like, no way I can defend against every possible threat that they have. Further, like, you're supposed to push pawns in pairs, and I've not done that at all. So while my opponent's built up this very nice, solid pawn barrier that none of my pieces can break through, and done well supporting it with their generals, um, my pawn structure is basically indefensible. Actually, this invites them to just take, and they hit my bishop. Well, then my bishop can take here. I get a slight initiative out of this. Maybe it's okay. I was going to comment how this rook over could just ruin everything, but it's not so simple. Um, all right. Well, this is my big idea, is that if they did push this, I could move my rook back and try to open the center file. But now they got six pawns in a line, which I think is a strong formation, if only they had generals covering all the pawns. Or if they had at least this gold up on 5-3. This, I, in my opinion, is a very strong, very difficult to break pawn barrier. Um, it's weak from attacks from or drops from behind, but I don't have anything to drop. So it, that doesn't really matter here. Yeah, so they play this move. Um, they threaten to support that with the silver, so I basically have to recapture. Or the rook even could support it. And then the rook and a pawn dropping on that file could ruin my day. But um, on the other hand, I could promote my bishop and start attacking something. I don't know. This whole position is so fragile. Saving grace here is that if their rook drop or moves to the file, I could drop a pawn behind the bishop. And they don't have a piece other than their bishop that can remove this very easily. I mean, they could drop a pawn, I could retreat, and I think I'm okay. Oh, right. Duh. 
Duh, duh, duh. Well, this summarily defeats all of my arguments. And summarily meaning just, like, in a single blow, very easily, crushes every argument I just made. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, now I kind of have to move the knight. Which is why you don't move it early, because if you move it early, you lose it. And now I've lost it again. Um, so I guess here we're sacking the knight for a pawn. The problem is that this does nothing to slow down their attack. They're going to play the rook over, and there's still nothing I can do to stop this attack from just crashing in with full force. Um, see, so yeah, I'm in trouble. It's funny, like, my lessons that I get are basically, whoa, you need to have a plan. And then the minute I form a plan, oh, your plan is not right. Well, that's great. I need to watch more games, basically, to come up with good plans. Otherwise, I'm just going to come up with bad plans. Um... Shogi's hard. And I'm not making it any easier, am I? So yeah, my current plan. Push this pawn. One, two. So it's not my move, and it'll take at least two more moves for this plan to do anything useful. Um, plus, he's going to gain a tempo by hitting my bishop again. So this is not great. Especially because my plan might not even work. Okay, that's one free tempo. Very surprising. Um, I mean, I see a way that he could make this idea work better than it currently works, but still... Perhaps not the most inspired idea to begin with. I'm in trouble, so I'm just going to keep moving. So yeah, he can set up a barricade and make it harder for this pawn to advance. But um, not sure that this is the right idea here. I think we're both so paranoid about our opponents making strong moves against us and that um, we're both playing very defensively. And for my part, it's just because I can't find the attacking ideas in most positions. Um, I know my opponent is, is experienced and finds lots of good ideas, and I don't really do the same. I need to, but I haven't done so yet. All right. Well, I have nothing other than this move, so we're going to play it. Um, and then we're going to bear in mind the advice we just received from Pawn Hub, which is don't sack the token when you can still use it. Like, a token's a valuable piece. So I should have some effort to not, like, strand it in a corner or otherwise sacrifice it. Um, yeah. I'm trying to work through if he attacks my rook and all the different ways he can attack it directly or indirectly with a pawn or with a knight or with a knight drop or something else. Should I advance it up here? Should I advance it up here? Where should my rook go? How, how, here. You're hitting the pawn, maybe. Um, right, so... 
this instant. He's threatening to advance on me here. Um, my gold is so stranded back here. There's nothing to do about it. Um, so let's bring this token toward the king and open the file for my rook. And then promote the rook back here. But also we're going to try to defend against any attack he can make at my bishop. Maybe we can promote the bishop soon. The downside to all of this is that I'm losing my gold. Um, so that's very unfortunate. Uh, I would very much like to have that, but it's not an effective defender at this stage. If he pushes, do I just run away and allow him to keep hitting me? No, I like need to get my rook promoted before shit hits the fan, so... Um, yeah, let's get the rook promoted and then worry about what to do with the rest of this. Wait, if I take the silver, if they take my... Well, no. If I take the silver, they're just going to put something in front of my rook. And maybe that's fine. Yeah, silver general's worth quite a bit. Um, and promoting my bishop is also worth quite a bit. It's complicated. Oh, but also getting this one square closer to king could be valuable too. But to me, the most valuable aspect of this is that like these generals are still divided. I expected him to drop something in front of my rook, but actually that just loses material for him. And promoting my rook is great, but um, there's actually more ideas in Shogi than just a rook promotion. Right. So now we make the best use of our rook, either on the first rank or the third rank up there, which is going to be the uh, first, well, he's, his rook defends a lot of stuff. Breaking in on the first rank is going to be hard, but taking the lance, lance is on the first rank, I could use a lance. Um, I can't really force a breakthrough on the third rank, can I? Yeah, this is the safest square for my rook. I'm not prone to any forks back here. If I promote it on the third rank, they could do a knight drop and then take my token. So, this is actually probably better. And now, the end game. Well, the transition from a middle game to an end game. My opponent's better at reading forcing lines than I am. I'm good at spotting practical chances, so this is going to be a wild end game. Yeah, I don't know about this. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't bishop. Or I can't silver drop right next to that. That'd be dumb. Uh, Yeah, we'll take the lance. Lacking 
any better idea. Huh. This actually does open a different promotion square for my bishop, although it really doesn't belong on 9-3. My bishop belongs in the center, even if that doesn't promote it. I was surprised to see this silver highlighted. I mean, yeah, it's that's a tempting move to play. Um, I'm still surprised to see this. I don't understand the meaning of this move. Hang on, he had his... well, the gold drop here is not the best place for the gold. Um... My bishop is so not active where it is. I have other pieces too. I feel like I'm walking into a trap, but um, my bishop is like useless if it's only attacking a pawn. So we're going to put it on a more useful square. Oh, maybe another point of this is just to open the file for the rook. Maybe that's another way to look at it. So I have three pawns, so I want to open the center file somehow. So I could just keep dropping pawns on this file and promoting them all. Um, but then again, they control the head of this, so there's like nowhere I can drop them safely. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's too slow. I need a faster idea. Yeah, that's a good practical idea. Um, I'm not sure how much trouble this idea is going to get my opponent in. Oh, hang on, that's a free pawn. Restrictions may apply, but... Um, now that looks like a free pawn to me. Well, they're not going to push this pawn again. That would just be crazy. I'll see where this gold ends up. I forgot they can drop pieces, too. This is about to get interesting. I should have just taken this and then lance drop and rook takes lance, pawn takes, and hoped that like somehow I break in. Or that taking the rook would somehow just be the decisive piece I needed. Instead, we have this strangeness where now they can actually drop a piece and who knows what's going to happen next. Sil or gold drop, silver takes gold, gold takes bishop, silver takes rook. <sighs> what else? My problem is that I miss if Tokin takes, gold takes, and I don't have a strong counter. So I need to start by taking this gold. And they take respond by taking my bishop, I take their rook. Um, it's not clear what's going on. Dropping more pieces doesn't seem to change anything here.
40秒。I don't need my bishop. Just gonna keep approaching the king. It's gonna be okay somehow. They're basically forced to take the bishop, but, um, and I actually don't see a way that, like, I can immediately, uh, crack the castle. Oh, I forgot. Okay, yes, this is legal. All right, well, that was a complicated way to win an exchange. Um, now we have a gold. Can we pretend that was on purpose? I can't. I'm not that cool. Screw it. My silver's doing nothing back here. Let's have some fun. So the idea is if rook takes, um, we have a lance drop. And then we have three pieces pointing at 3-1. Um, So it's kind of in their interest to close things that they just opened. Hmm. That finally lands. What a complicated position. Yes, I don't see what they're going to do. Meanwhile, we're just going to like put the gold up here. And just continue piling on this gold back there. Unless I can find another way in. Mm, there's a complication. Well... They night drop, I just take the night. It's not that complicated. Mm. Yeah, silver could attack this lance. Okay, well, that's possible too. Um. Hmm. There's only so far that practical guidelines will get me, and at some point I do need to actually read things correctly. Um, we passed that point a long time ago. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. We're going to play this and hope it's okay. But 
I really don't think it is. I'm in so much deep doo-doo here, because I cannot read for squat. Nice. No, that is correct. Um, how am I supposed to match that? I guess I have to take this. I don't really have any choice in that matter. But his attack just grows more severe from here. Unless somehow I escape it all, but it's not looking likely. Can my king fend for itself? I wonder. I guess I was deeply concerned about a bishop drop uh, on the square I just put my gold on. Um... So that's why I did this gold drop. I was hoping for gold takes gold, but gold takes silver is interesting. Gold takes silver, gold takes, and they drop something here, and I put another gold back there. And I've not found a way to expel all the attackers yet, nor have I found a way for me to break in. Okay, this I did not expect. Um, or rather, I hoped for it, but I thought, surely he's not going to do this. Um, so my king fights back on this square. I don't see how their attack continues. I mean, either it goes in this blaze uh, that's either successful or it crashes and burns. It's one or the other. I'm not sure which. So I'm looking at gold 5-8. Yeah, no, I saw this. I didn't think this worked. I thought this was too slow. Um, for me to say that, I have to have some attacking idea of my own. I have some ideas. Oh, he's got a bishop drop back here. That's interesting. Okay. Well, this just got real. Um, I also have pawn drop on my king's head, which renders everything useless. That sucks. Um, yeah, I'm just blind here. I don't see what's going on. They have 60 seconds to find some mate.
and it wouldn't surprise me if they have one. But I just cannot read this. It's just way too much. This is probably also mistaken. I might have had success like dropping another piece near this castle. But like trying to break Time Zombie or Panic's castle is near impossible because he's done far more Sume Shogi than I have. I had a pawn drop back here. I missed it. All right, so my thought was I was going to run away here, and I missed how strong uh, Bishop drop back here is. So running seems very much not the right answer. Um, so I have to take, which also is terribly problematic. But I don't have a choice here. I was thinking I was going to run, but no, running is terrible. Yeah, this bishop check, uh, and then the king goes over, and, like, there's mate everywhere there. So we have to go this way. And this is why, like, last turn, instead of Tokian takes silver, I should have just put a pawn. Well, yeah, a pawn down here would be legal, and it was necessary. And I've had previous games where pawn drop in 4 8 was necessary. And I've deal. missed it there too. And this just emphasizes my need to practice end games. <sighs> so, yeah, he's going to check me. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, I don't have any choice here. It's this or resign, so we're going to play this. We're going to play on a little bit longer because I still don't see the mate. But, like, I have no confidence in my own mate at this point. Um, I just want to see how they win this. Yes, uh, they have me at this point. Uh, hmm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that does it. Very nicely done. Good game. All right. Yeah. He's a formidable opponent, that's for sure. Um, yeah. So I think, obviously, it was a sharp game. Uh, in any sharp game, we both of us miss things. Um, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, we can take a break. <laughs> uh, poor Panic. This is, he hasn't streamed, uh, before. I, maybe this is his first stream. Uh, sure. I mean, I'm gonna do some something. I have to comment for 10 minutes, because, like, we're making a video. Um, so what can I say? Well, yeah, so I think everybody sees the mate here. So my king goes over, and then they take this uh, silver, and they drop any general here, and then, um, yeah, like, this mate swiftly follows, either with the gold or the silver. But yeah, once they take the silver, there's absolutely nothing here. You're wondering about 52. Yeah, so I would be moving around pieces, except he would see all the pieces I'm moving and he'd freak out because um, he wants a break right now. Um, I don't know what's so surprising. I mean, yes, taking into account the rating system, ooh, I had two more rating points going into the game than he did. Um, but um, 
I think unless, like, well, no, the rating applies better to amateur players than it does to pro players. Rating systems tend to work better on the middle of the scale than the um, than on the extremes. <sighs> it's a hard fought game. Again, like I'm just annoyed at my own play. Um, obviously, I'm outread by my opponent. He was afraid of me for some reason. I really don't think he had any reason to be afraid. Um. Sure, I found some good ideas, but like if he puts up any kind of reasonable castle, I'm not going to be able to knock it down. Um, so, not unless, like, there was a game I played a week or two ago on the teaching ladder where an opponent um, did make an effort to put up a reasonable castle, and I just ended up replicating something that both Yamaguchi and uh, Murnaka had explained in terms of effectively using a bishop on a diagonal against a king and a pin being just a lethal weapon so the, there was that and it only worked because they missed some tactic too so like um yeah i, I can play ideas that i've seen before but coming up with new ideas is super hard for me and approaching the castle super hard for me and um it's good that like Players like Pawn Hub and such are so patient. Um, honestly, I don't know how he manages to be patient with me just flailing about the entire game. And he tells me, you need to find a plan. I'm like, yes, I know. Okay, thank you. He's right, but... Um, yeah. So again, I'm vamping until um, my opponent's ready to do post-game analysis. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, well, they say the same thing in chess. Long variation, wrong variation. There's all kinds of pithy sayings about if you spend too much time thinking, you're not doing the correct kind of thinking. And this kind of is, I mean, this is true, but the whole concept is backwards. That, like, yes, that's very true that, like, you're doing the wrong thinking. But how do you fix that? It's not, it's a, it's a saying that is true. You need to recognize when it's happening. But also it doesn't solve itself. This is why we have to play the game. If we just knew how to improve, we would just improve. And that'd be that simple. Um, and if it's as simple as saying, like, oh, you're thinking too long, just play a move. Well... I'm kind of not of that opinion yet. Um, yeah, Proverbs, uh, there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, there's always exceptions to the rule. Again, I'd be moving about the pieces here. I'd be explaining how I needed to do a pawn drop on 4-8. Like I have in numerous previous games where I've gotten smashed on the fourth file. I'm just not learning it at all. It's not sticking. And yeah, like, um, what is this? I did get that book. Uh, so the other day, uh, Shogi Harbor had, had a seven Don pro, um, offer a teaching, uh, four piece handicap simul against both, uh, Shaiman and the Llama Lord. So he's playing two games at once. And uh, I am forgetting the name of this Seven Don professional, strong player, great teacher, wrote a book in English to help explain endgames. I have purchased the book. I've just not had the time to actually read it. And it's terrible. And I'm playing these teaching games, which are just... Yeah, it's an experience here. I don't know if I should be playing this teaching ladder, to be honest, because I'm not putting in the effort between games. Um, but yeah, what was the name of this author? Um, I'm scrolling up through Discord trying to find my own picture of the book that we just found yesterday. Um, which pieces do you need to make? Oh, Katagami. K-A-T-A-G-A-M-I. Um, 
he uh, wrote a, this book, Which Pieces Do You Need to Mate? Um, oh, you're surprised. Okay, uh, what should I say? <laughs> Have you seen my games before? Have you seen me, like, play on Play Shogi? Where I'm trying to solve three move checkmates. And, like, I struggle to get, like, a score of five. I get five on a good day. Um, within five minutes. Most of the time, I don't get a score of five on three move puzzles. I usually uh, fail before I've uh, attempted. Well, you get three strikes so i usually get three strikes before i've solved my fifth puzzle and they give you like a five minute timer to solve uh, five puzzles so usually i'm failing at these easy easy problems um and here i am playing against somebody who's like had these two hour commutes where he would regularly solve suma shogi books that he had on both ways the commute um so, like, he knows exactly how to build a castle and how to break a castle. And I can't find checkmate. Like, I play chess. I see tactics. I hit pieces. Going after the king is an afterthought. Um, if you've seen my chess games, any time I try to attack the king against a decently strong player, it fails. So, um... Yeah, almost always my chess games end up going into a chess end game where almost all the pieces have been traded off, and then I manage to win with some rook fork. Or some strange checkmate there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the training arc. So, like, we could do training arc. Just be aware that might take a year or two or five. So, you might have to be patient. I don't know that this outcome was so surprising. Um, I didn't want to, like, suggest this to my opponent before the game, that, like, this is a complete mismatch, but... Um, I, I did find some ideas this game. And the reason we play this game is so we can learn. Um, yeah, again, like, I've said this in my previous video, I'm saying it again now, that my plan for this weekend, and really this week, was that I was going to play some strong players first, and my rating was never going to cross into one Don territory, and then I was going to see, like, could I spend the whole week trying to get back into, like, up to 4 1499 again, and then have another promotion game and succeed. Instead of the path that we ended up taking, where my game with Shogi Hall tournament was unrated, so... Um, so I lost that, but my rating stayed at 1499. I played another teaching ladder game where my opponent um, just made several endgame blunders, uh, where I ended up sacrificing many of my pieces for some very optimistic attack that by a miracle broke through. Um, so like I won by the narrowest of margins from a completely lost position. And here I'm facing a another proper one don and was just solidly outplayed throughout the game. Um, yeah, I did manage to promote my rook. Good for me. I did get a token and I traded it off, but I just did not defend my king at all. One minute per move is like nothing for me. This is... Um, yeah, I don't know what to do, other than just practice a ton of Sume Shogi. And again, I've never found the time for it, because I'm always coding the Play Shogi site. So, again, I'm continuing to vamp. I don't mean to rant. I mean to be, like, looking at all these positions, but I don't want to pan uh, cause my opponent to panic. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know when he's going to be ready for post-game analysis, but we'll get to it when we're ready. I did have a good game against Avi Gale, where also by some miracle I managed to win it. 
Um, somehow when he's playing very late at night for him, I don't know why he keeps agreeing to match times so late at night or why he keeps suggesting them, but that's apparently the best hour for us to play at. But he misses tactics at that hour, and so like somehow I manage to take advantage. Um, our first game that we played, I got an advantageous position and blew it. And we saw that one on one of the Shogi Sundays on Shogi Harbor's channel. Um, um, yeah, our most recent game, he made some mistakes, and I pounced all over it. But I think he plays better than that most of the time. Somehow I just played better in general. Um... Players are all excited about doing the post-game analysis. Oh, man. I mean, I don't want to have to lock the game room or something. That would be pretty rude, but... Um, Senta wins. With you take the silver. Like, no, this is pretty clean and obvious that my king moves, they do gold takes silver, and there's nothing I can do. So Gota wins that, I think is what he means. All right, are we ready for post-game analysis? I am so ready. I am beyond ready for post-game analysis. Uh, oh. Uh, sure, let's uh, give that a try. Um, uh, which, uh, which Discord, uh, voice chat, um, or rather, I don't really know how best to contact him through Discord, but we'll figure it out. Um, we're gonna get some feedback when I do this. Let me lower my speaker volume to try to deal with the feedback. I don't have a headset, so there's going to be some echo. All right, sounds good. Oh yeah, so there is a voice channel here on stream. All right. Um, let's see, can I join the voice call? Deafened and muted. Let's undeafen. Um, all right, how do I undeafen? Right, and then how do I unmute? Uh, there okay. you are. There we go. Okay, so uh, people on my stream, is Trudowski's, uh voice coming out okay, or should I raise the volume? Sound check. One, two, three. Yes, lots of sound check. Sound check for everyone. Okay, you're okay. All right, very good. Okay, I was surprised to see the resignation at the very end. What oh, did really? you? It's okay. scary, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess what I had looked at here is I think I have one move, and I think this is Hishi, I think. So you get the silver in hand, and I really didn't see anything to do about uh, this. Yeah, so that's the plan. So now you just go check, 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 and hope it's a mate. That's basically the plan. Yeah. Um, okay, which check should I start with? <laughs> Uh, so people are saying you should try the token. I think you're the one that has the host. Oh, okay, yeah. I so, yeah, see. you can... All right, so... Uh, I was almost certain there was some way to get out of these checks. Um, so can this move here? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I have a bishop in play, don't I? Yeah. Um, so... Okay. Yeah, I guess the resignation was premature. Yeah, this isn't so obvious. Um, let me full screen my board. So then, yeah, you've got... 
rook drop there. Uh, okay. Then okay. that forces a capture. Uh, yes, it does. Well, is that forced? Uh, you could go up. Because, yeah, if the captures happen, then there's nothing left to defend the king. Yeah, and then... Oh. Okay. Wow. I see. Alright, so yeah, our main line that we were looking at was we take here. But yeah, surely, um, yeah, there's no defense at this point. Because this comes back in play. Yeah, okay. Wow. Um, I suppose, yeah, resignation was... Well, at least on this, resignation was premature. Yeah. Uh, so... I can do Hishi, and then you have to try to mate me. Because I don't think there is a good defense. Yeah, so if we take the silver, all that transpires, and there's not really good defense there. Um, hmm. Okay, so one spectator noted this. Should I hand over the host status, sir? I don't... Does that really work? Uh, sure. Is there someone that would like to volunteer? Let's see. Um... Yeah, I guess we'll hand this over to Pawn Hub for a while. I did not like what I did to my castle. Oh, yeah. The, how this. It surprised me in this part of the game, like. All four of your generals are disconnected, which is a little bit loose, but um, but they cover a lot of space this way too. Okay, this way this makes way more sense than what I did. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was terrified of this. Oh man. Well, now that I see it, I feel like this is so great. What like now the. So I, I kept thinking that just your your pawn was going to be coming in, and I was just terrified of it getting near my rook. But yeah. you don't really have any pieces in hand, so yeah, this is right. And I mean, yes, my pawn will be coming in. I finally did find one idea that works here, but it is so slow. Okay, so this works a little bit better because the uh, uh, the rook isn't getting in yet because the it's blocked by the bishop. Right. Oh, interesting. Exploiting the pen. Hmm. Yeah, so I was afraid that the rook was going to get trapped in the bottom rank because the gold on 4 1 is kind of blocking it from retreat. They should drop there. Interesting. Yeah, there's so many piece dropping ideas in this position. It... My rook is just so prone, and yeah, I'm really not sure what I do about any of this. Oh, nice. If 
If I had only not panicked and gone for the seventh file. Yeah. As soon as you move that uh, bishop off the diagonal, and uh, then you've only got one defender on five seven. Yeah. And then if I could convince you to move the silver, then then it's it's gone. So you probably noticed that. However, I honestly believe that that attack was too slow, and you could have ignored it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So my my hope was entirely just to bluff you and try to confuse you. Uh, <laughs> And if you responded to it, then you are taking moves away from your own attack. Um, yeah, I, I do think my attack is somewhat faster here if I can manage to read it in Bioyami. But um, um, yeah, in theory, I should stand better here, but in practice, it's kind of hard. Yes, this is actually what I was expecting. I was expecting you to attack with the token. Okay. Uh, so you don't you so you don't actually remove the silver from four six, uh, so then it never becomes an issue of jumping uh, the knight to five seven because it's always defending there. Sure. Uh, and you can just make a token and start exchanging off. And you could you have three pawns. You can make three more tokens. So would I be like making them on the seventh file all the way out there, or do I need to open another file? Um, I don't think I can really attack super fast, so oh. I kind of I kind of feel like you could get away with it. But all you need actually is just a couple generals in hand, and you can just exchange all of them, and then you've got a bunch of pieces pointing over here. Yes. So here, I don't have a real threat, because I don't have enough pieces in hand. Oh, wow. So you see, I, you might have been afraid of a bishop drop, but I, I need a gold. A silver isn't really good enough. Huh. OK. Yeah, so I was trying to make a silver work. Um. I think if I had two silvers, I mean, could you can I make get that the work second then? silver yeah. easily enough with a rook sacrifice, but um... yeah. So I was consider I was contemplating rook sacrifices, um, but yeah, it's I I couldn't figure out how to mate with uh, um, with 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 the silver. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to be able to have a golden hand, so I don't know if it would have worked out. So I, I might have just sacked the rook or just tried to go for Hishi. Sure. Um, I, I didn't yeah, I didn't see a good way to try to do it. Um I was considering even maybe like a night drop on two seven or two five. Yeah. To go for brink mate. Right. Yeah, okay. Pawn head. Pawn hub. It's done now. So, oh, before I forget, let me just put this in Shogi GUI really quick. Oh, sure. Uh, and then we'll just have it tell us if there's a mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy way. Yeah, the engines are so much better than the people at this sort yeah. of thing. So I don't really know any central rook theory, so I don't know how close my ideas are to like actually what you should play yeah I've, well, I've watched a couple videos about it but like there's so much more to learn um did you learn any of the bishop exchange lines uh no That's... yeah i thought i thought that would be the case because muranaka i don't think has really covered it right. and um supposedly uh the positions to learn are a lot easier if you learn to play with uh, the bishops exchanged um, but I think there's a way to actually play Gok again without, like maybe if you just push the 
uh, the, the five, seven pawn, and then you move the rook over, and then you just go for primitive central rook, then... Sure, so then, yeah, I Then could... you don't exchange it, maybe it'll Yeah, transpose. I can, I think I can avoid this exchange. Uh, yeah, that's okay, certainly I'm, possible. I'm, go I'm going to, I'm going to uh, start the analysis, and we'll, we'll see if my stream crashes. All right, sounds fair. Um... Okay, so I think uh, Pawnhub gave me the hat back, right? Some host again. Okay, yeah, so Yonle uh, Uroro doesn't believe it. It says black wins. <laughs> I see. You're talking about like toward the end of the game. It's just saying the like, black, in, in yeah. the re in the resignation position. You resigned in a winning position. Uh, I've done that before. <laughs> I've done it before as well, multiple times. Yeah. So uh, it appears that uh, the Bioyomi panic happened. Uh, so you were doing really, really good for a while, but yeah, this the the graph is actually looking kind of crazy. It's going up and down. Yeah, well, this is why I gotta practice more end games like the Sume problems. <laughs> um, but yeah, also like my decision to take this pawn out here, uh, this, as you point out, like this just helps your knight and other pieces toward my king. Yes, so that was me trying to trick you. Yeah. So well, the other thing you, is like you, I you thought like you, you surely were... there are ways to force my silver away. Like this is coming, right? So I could try that. And then you take it, and then now you've got uh, a uh, silver that's closer to my king, right? Um, and and importantly, uh, it's also defending this square, so I couldn't try any tricks with the uh, the knight really. So that's oh. why I was, yeah. Okay. So you, you're you're defending you're defending useful squares. So I wasn't quite sure. sure. Um, uh, maybe well, this would a, be better. Yeah, this uh, is a good I'm, point. I'm not. I'm not quite sure because you actually you're gonna find it difficult to go back. Because I mean, when I attack here, you could also just go back if I don't do it immediately. Sure. So yeah, yeah. and this way you've actually burned up a move and not actually activated the rook at all. So like, it's the way you approached was better, and I just should have ignored. So, this. but I, I was I was also afraid that um, I'm not sure what I was thinking about it actually, because I was thinking about doing that. Um, but uh, I also have no pawns in hand, so if I need to be able to drop a pawn in defense on top of the, the gold, I don't have anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I was thinking that if I push this, I can maybe try to uh, distract your silver um, or try to perhaps exchange that pawn, but you have a lance, so it really doesn't work. Right, um, but but uh, you fell for a trap I had inadvertently set up where <laughs> you're like, oh, you can't take it. And then I was like, oh, you moved it, great. Now I can fake an attack. Yeah, and I like, well, this just brings my silver closer to your king, so it must be good, right? No. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. objectively, is it a good move to to do that? Is it tactically justified? You know, perhaps it is. Maybe, but like, there's I'm not. So many I'm not quite ideas. sure. It's it's. <laughs> It's just that, like, why why make life so difficult for yourself? Because this pawn isn't really doing anything. Yeah. Um, and really, you want to, like, get in all the action that are around my king and the generals. And especially because you have this token that is just... And there's just this weak spot right here that's just sort of crying out to be exploited. Right. So, I mean, the problem that I have is that... um, You are going to be able to add generals and the token into the attack and it i just couldn't see a way that i didn't lose more pieces and then that would put me over the edge and make it so that you'd be able to at the very least i think capture the rook or be able to um uh uh checkmate me somehow yeah, like one idea I should have considered and didn't even cross my mind is like this just trying to pile up on uh, both ends of the castle. Oh, that is a very good way to yeah. think about it. Uh, well, I'm. It's still yeah, pretty so slow, I'm, so but. The problem, yeah. the problem being is that I'm defending 
twice right but you also we've got this going over here yeah so i'm still gonna got... have to add more pieces for this to work but this could have been the start of something yeah i i need to practice more soon because like i don't know how, like okay pawn hub was pointing out i should like approach like this yes so if you have a token near the opponent's camp and yeah. your and I don't have anything near your camp. You should just keep attacking. So that's basically the way that it goes. Uh, have you seen the uh, end game mating races uh, videos of Hidechi's? That actually explains the concepts of initiatives to mate and uh, how to calculate end game attacking speed. Uh, I saw one. Yeah. Yeah. So you have one, two, three, four. I've got one, two, three, four, but you can you can take. So I mean, one, two, three, four, and for a check. So we're one, two, three. So you're faster by one by no, because you you started first, right? So you're faster by one move. So if I just went crazy, and you and you went crazy too, and you just sure. started going directly for it, just just going move, move, move towards the king, yeah. you're going to get the check first. So your attack must be faster. OK. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so because your attack is faster, and I don't really have a good way to accelerate my attack, there's no useful good checks, because then um, I can't do anything. So then if your attack is faster, I have to defend. Mm -hmm. Move my generals around to try to delay your mate or early escape, something like that. Sure. Uh, no nothing works. Or plan B, play into what you know is losing and hope your opponent panics. That's kind of what I went for. Right. Uh, yeah. And so then if you uh, were playing a game of chicken where yep. <laughs> the outcome is predetermined, you know that, you know, I, I tell you, if, we, if you play chicken against me, you're going to win. Just don't, you know, duck out. But then when we get to that last second, you're like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe I should turn away. And then as soon as you hesitate, then yeah, that'll happen. Uh, I, I even pointed out at certain points, just like, okay, maybe he'll get scared. And then I noticed you were like, you were, you were handling the token at one point. Yeah, you were for something like the last it. 40 moves of this game, I was panicking. So that's pretty great. Yeah, you, you were thinking about moving that token and making the winning move. But yeah. then you hesitated and played something else. So uh, I, I had a psychological advantage, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, toward the end here. I mean, even if I do play this, uh, there's still some ways you can put up some kind of resistance. It, it's going to require me to find some accurate moves here to break things down. Um, but yeah, no, you're, my attack is faster. Yeah, so really it's just like, I, I, I won't resign until I see the mates, but yeah, I'll I'll just be going, oh, this is so terrible. I'm losing. It's like I was yeah. like that as like when you had the pawn on two two five or or on eight five or something like that. Like right when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna run and my rook doesn't have a good place to go, my castle's terrible. And I was just like, you're just gonna crush me. I'm losing slowly. And <laughs> and uh the fact that I was able to bring it to the third rank and sort of like pretend to make an attack on there or something and and it ended up being an okay defensive piece it was actually surprising to me because i just expected the token to come out and destroy it way earlier yeah like i've I've never seen this kind of attack on the third file before so i had no idea what to do against it um so i'm well, very it, easily spooked <laughs> yeah i i was thinking maybe an edge attack would work but the problem is, is that i have no pawns in hand and right. you know all these shenanigans work a lot better if you have pawns in hand. Yeah. So nothing is really working out well. Uh, I really wish I'd seen just yeah. So I I panicked first because uh, I am not so good at the middle game. Um, hmm. But uh, uh, then uh, you panicked last. But that's when you want to not panic is really yeah. You know, I know like this when you're doing the checkmate part that excited most of the spectators. But the really that first part of the game also confused me quite a bit. Um, although, yeah, like we said, we're both learning this uh, bishop exchange thing here. And I yeah, think this, I th this should be fine, although I was concerned a bit, like... 
Um, so, I've yes, yes. Never seen this I, before. I saw that that is a potential thing that could happen, and then you push the silver forward, and then I grab this, and then I got a pawn. But is right. that really that valuable? And this is similar to a suji chigai kaku uh, opening. That's that means um, wrong diagonal bishop. Ah, yeah, I think I've yeah. seen that once, and it's been a long time. So, uh, my bishop is not. I, I've committed already to dropping the bishop to get a single pawn, uh, and that did not seem worth it to me. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, whereas you still have the opportunity to drop on the bishop, and also look, I'm on the wrong diagonal, so this bishop is still open. So right. It gives me so I need to be careful about how I do it. Like if I if I just went and did something stupid like this, mm -hmm. uh, then yeah. potentially you can get uh, tactics in. Yes. Um, and yeah. So which which is dangerous. Um, also dangerous is that if I end up pushing the pawn, then mm -hmm. uh, there's this sort of thing that can happen. Oh right. So, yeah. Yeah, these sorts of tactics can happen, and uh, I was afraid of it, so that's why I wasn't pushing the pawn immediately because I didn't. I wanted to uh, try to sidestep all of those sorts of variations. Right. Uh, no, that, that's fair. Yeah. So I had considered this, and I was considering playing it, but I just wanted to wait a little bit before trying to commit to that, so that the diagonal was secured beforehand. Yeah, that makes uh, yes. sense. Uh, no, so Shogi Explained is a more of like a show. Uh, so Sorry, there's someone in chat that's a little Oh, confused. sure, sure. Show, yeah, Shogi Explained is a show uh, featuring Time Zombie. So uh, you can, like, if, if you, like, have, like, some pro content that you want to, like, have as a lecture or something like that, I can give you a streaming key, and you can actually stream as Shogi Explained, you know, hosted by, you know, whoever, and, uh, and do your lesson. And the idea is that this specific channel will only have shogi stuff. There's not going to be any like variety streaming, people playing League of Legends or whatever. So I, I get pinged a whole bunch from people that are variety streamers. And I'm just like, well, I don't want to see them play League of Legends. I'm not into that. So that's why I have the separate account. And, you know, if you want, if you're a variety streamer and you want to be able to stream only, you know, like, you know mostly non shogi stuff and you want a little bit of shogi, then yeah, you can stream directly to this account. Uh, panic is another alternative identity that I have, uh, and then uh, that I it, it predates Time Zombie by quite a long time. Yeah, and uh, I so that's why I, I kept that name. I also made a Time Zombie. I was considering using that as well, but yeah. Uh, and then I have another name is Shogi Bon. However, I found out that there's at least two other Shogi Bonds, so that's not a very good name to use. Or you can just say Time Zombie. <laughs> yeah, coming up with original names <laughs> is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, not only was there someone that is already Shogi Bond, but apparently he had been Shogi Bond for 20 years. So I felt bad uh, taking it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he was a French player uh, that uh, made a lot of uh, early, like, 2000s website stuff for Shogi. So, uh, oh, wow. Like, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't take his, his username. It's a great way to meet people, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. So. I'm curious as to what the actual Joseki lines are supposed to look like. So apparently, yeah, up until move 44, mm -hmm. I was totally winning. Okay, yeah, I, actually, I felt I actually, like, like my position just is so uncoordinated. This is pretty surprising to me, actually. Um, so, like, it's even just white, here, maybe I should one... just consider uh, this is, I don't know. But it's yeah. just white one position, white one position on move 44. So You're saying that's up pretty amazing. Until to me. 44, it was, uh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. And then immediately after that, within a few moves, it immediately swayed back the other way and it started going into your favor. So, uh, I actually apparently was playing the opening pretty well. Um, and then once we reached the middle game, uh, you started taking over, and then I bluffed you in the end game. So that's kind of what I expected, actually. Yeah. Although I, I expect I wasn't sure how the opening would go. Actually, I was surprised that the advantage was so big. 
Well, I guess like each of these uh, teaching letter things, I do try to push my opening boundaries a bit. Um, so like here, it makes sense that if I'm playing something that I've watched some videos a little about, about and don't necessarily know the greatest um, that we're going to learn um, or that I'm going to find that there's some hole in my repertoire here. So, um, yeah, no, it makes sense. I think, um, yeah, I, like, there's not very many castles that I'm familiar with, so that kind of limits my options. Um, and maybe I should practice building different castles or trying some different openings or something. Uh, yeah, so um, I am going to watch the VOD afterwards. I'm curious what you were thinking during the whole game, actually. Um, oh, I'm not host. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I can I could give you the host. Yeah, that's. Yeah, so uh, I played this silver here because I was also thinking about this, and I, so I just sort of preempted it. Right. Okay. So then now you are making a sort of bishop exchange type structure. I wasn't sure if that was normal or if you were just thinking about it at this point, like. Uh, yeah, I was scratch. trying to be cautious because I saw like your rook is on this file, and I didn't know where the bishop might drop, so I wanted to be prepared in case you did drop the bishop and somehow it coordinated an attack with this rook yeah um then this seems normal so then i i i, I telegraph that i'm going for left me know immediately right okay we both start castling this seems okay seems like normal stuff to me and then i go for high me know um i think i felt like left high me know was uh, good to um, play against your central pawn push. Uh, I was worried that at some point, you know, you might have a bishop drop in my camp and then get a horse or something like that. But I'm, it's it's all kind of really new to me. I was thinking about making silver crown actually, but uh, your silver started moving really fast, and I wasn't sure how to uh, like like I didn't think I had enough time to try to make a silver crown. So, uh, drop bishop 2-2. Two, two. So maybe when... they're talking about that first position where you did this telegraphing. Oh, oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, did I get myself in trouble? I might have no. gotten myself in trouble. No, I, th I think you're fine. So, they're asking, what about this? Yeah. Was... Okay. What now? What is your plan? I'm supposed to have a plan here. <laughs> you just exchanged. Yeah. Okay, now you help me develop. Congratulations. Is there another time you were thinking about Cleon Victor? Was there another time you were thinking about dropping on Bishop 2 2? Because I think that just dropping the bishop just solves everything. It's still, still, I can just drop the bishop. Still okay. Now you can't drop there anymore. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like when you did this telegraphing for a brief moment, I was very surprised, and then I like, oh wait, you have the bishop three three, and like my pro I can't promote there, and yeah, or at least I, my bishop can't escape after that drop. So, this is the problem when both players have bishop in hand: is that many bishop drops can be responded with just counter bishop drops, and then. You end up exchanging them, and then the person that initiated the exchange just helped the other player develop. Right. Okay, so... Here, this all seems normal. If, if you had done that, that would have been funny, actually. But yes, you're too good for that. So um, another thing that I considered doing, by the way, was uh, super speed silver 3-7. Uh, uh, but that is a very, very complicated opening. Uh, that requires knowing a lot of different lines, and I wasn't sure if you would play into it at all. Yeah, and, and Murnaka did yeah, a video I, about it recently. And I just don't know what I would be doing, so that's why I decided to go for the uh, Bishop Exchange. I think uh, what we played might have been Murayama's vaccine, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it's we we may have played like actual Joseki. Yeah, that could be. I think my silver on five five is in a strange spot. Like, 
Um, yeah, and I debated, like, do I want to move my silver up or did I want to push this pawn first? Um, okay, and... so here I, I saw... Saw this, right? Uh, yeah. This was your plan? And then... Uh, no, no, I can't do that. No, no. Uh, then move it wherever, and then you get this, right? So that's why I did that. So now, if you do nothing, yep, then I push there. Now, now this doesn't work anymore because I just take it. Right. Yeah. So very clever that you were trying to make a bishop drop work. Uh, you you probably saw that I could push the edge and prevent that bishop drop, and you use that, you use those two tempos, or tempi, to develop your knight and drop the bishop. Okay, so this was your, I didn't see this bishop drop. Yeah, so, eventually I realized, like, you've probably seen a wide variety of, like, bishop drop attempts on your end of the board, and um, while I could keep the bishop in hand forever, um, it just didn't seem useful to do that. So, yeah, um, so here I'm actually getting kind of scared because your plan is obvious. You're, you're going to go over here and push, and then you've got one, two, you'll have three going here, and then you're also adding additional pressure over here, and I can only support it with... It's, it's actually kind of difficult because your silver is here. I'm not quite sure if I have time. Like, if I tried this... Mm -hmm. Wait, is that what I played in-game? I'm No, in the game you actually defended against yeah. this threat. Yeah, this is, this is the problem that... one of the problems that I have. And that's actually uh, the reason why I did this. Um... I could have given you a gold, but instead I decided to try to defend uh, defend this idea. But by doing this, I I did this, I did this, and I'm you just leave this wide open, uh, and I never even got the opportunity to try to make Yagara. So hmm. at this point, I, it's still apparently. Uh, even or better, but it seems like it's difficult for me to play this. So this is something where I'd have to like know computer lines or something. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that was another thing that was clever is it had a dual purpose. You're going here and you're applying pressure over there, so. Okay, now here. Here, you need two moves to get over here, and yep. it's defended by a knight. Hmm. So, if so, my idea was is I wanted to get your silver out of the way. So, I pushed the pawn so it would go out of the way. Um, were you expecting me to take immediately? Honestly, like I've. I was just puzzled this entire time about where I should be advancing. It's difficult for me to get any of my pieces promoted, and you've blocked the long diagonal, so I just so, really didn't know what to do. Were you thinking of that this would happen? Uh, no, I missed this. I thought I would get to put my pawn there, and so I just completely missed that pawn drop idea. Yeah, uh, so I wasn't quite sure what you were going to do. Yeah, another idea I had was just pushing here, but yeah, again, I couldn't find anything decisive here. So then if I do this, then you've got two pieces on here. Uh... And this just, um, well, 
Well, in this final position, take, I was, take, take yeah, it. that's what I was thinking. This gold takes. And then this this doesn't this looks difficult. Uh, so I don't have a good. I wonder is night this any drop. good? I consider drops like that actually, uh, but it if I can't move that bishop anywhere, then this comes. Oh right. Which can get very complicated. So I was not comfortable doing that, uh, especially when the pawns are you know sort of they're one they have one square gap apart. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. I'm trying to think: is there some way to stop this pawn and or use this rook effectively? But um, yeah, it is difficult. So I wasn't. So I I would think I was in Biomi at this point, and I. Yeah. Uh, was having trouble reading that out and so i was considering taking it directly uh but then was what was i afraid of was i afraid of was it i don't think it was something like oh oh no no it wasn't that um what was what was it that i was seeing uh this perhaps oh that's interesting oh well no this actually doesn't look that scary because i was thinking that it would do that but i'm attacking there so Yeah, okay. Well, maybe I was seeing a ghost then. Uh, so I just thought that if I were to push your silver out of the way, then it prevents sort of like uh, tactics where you take with the silver. Yeah, the more I look at that, maybe you're right. Maybe that was a good attacking idea, actually. Like, um, Then there was... Um... So it's defended here, and also defended here. So you don't have time to just ignore my threat, so you've got to move it back. Now, aha! Now this is fine again. Cause... Right. So now, but unfortunately, I moved my silver directly up. So now I don't have an easy way to get it back. So that's unfortunate. Uh I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but yeah, uh, it, it alleviated pressure, uh, some pressure, and I, I felt like your silver up there wasn't really going to be doing much. But then it turned out it was actually protecting 5-7, and that got really annoying. Okay, and then as we played in game, um, so at this point, I was kind of seeing your plan, but I just, I saw this pawn drop, and I just didn't see what you could do about it. Yeah, no, I, I think that because... pawn drop is decisive. Like, I completely missed it, and it opens the seventh file for all your pieces, so... Yeah, so I uh, found a good pawn drop, but I didn't follow through with the, with the proper continuation, right. which was shown by Pawn Hub earlier. So, yeah, here. And this is what I thought you were going to do, um, but you see, this is actually protected by everything, so this doesn't do anything. Right. Um, if you still had the silver over here, maybe maybe you could uh, try to infiltrate on this diagonal. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when when we got to this point, my thought was is that I'm going to win the knights, but then I thought you were going to push your pawn and just and just infiltrate. I thought perhaps you were trying some sort of knight sacrifice line. Uh, so you, and, and, uh, I don't know if something like that exists, like if a, <laughs> maybe a night sack line, I, I would have no idea, upon, maybe I thought that it might happen. Computer suggests making Yagra at some point earlier, probably would have been a good, uh, so I really wanted to do that. I just felt like his attack was coming in too fast and I didn't have enough time. Like, and I had to respond to each one of those things. Maybe so. Hmm. When when would be a good time? 
Like, so even when I'm pushing this uh, third file pawn, I'm not sure what okay. it really does. Like, you were pointing out. Okay. Yeah. Here. Wait, I pushed here? Why did I push here? I thought you were trying to bring the knight out to do something, but... Oh, um... right. I was going to bring the knight out. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, and then the knight would uh, protect these two squares and potentially give me a way to uh, push the pawn or something and kick the bishop around. Uh, your bishop does have here, here, here that I can go to, though, and still kind of like exploit this diagonal, but I really just didn't like how it was on this diagonal. Uh, yeah, I'm... It's difficult for me to... Because, I mean, each move is like doing something. Like, it has, has like a specific purpose that they're going for, so... Is this still here? So if I do it now, now you can protect. Right? True, yeah. I also saw no good bishop drop opportunities at any point. Do you know when I dropped the bishop? I think it was the very last move. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this is so true, I just, yeah. I just kept it in my hand the entire time because I wasn't because I, I couldn't see any good way to defend. Uh, oh. Well, also surprised. Yeah, so I was looking oh. at this during the game. Oh, so I had considered something like this, but I'm not sure I just, if this actually I, works. I just I just felt like it was going to get attacked because having a knight in hand is really useful for forking, and I wanted to fork something at some point. Uh, yeah, I I didn't want to. Uh, Try to give you an opportunity. It does block here, but is that enough? Does this work? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. I I would feel nervous about doing this in 60 second video on me myself. <laughs> so you just keep this forever. I mean, can you just like start doing this? Well, uh, is it something? Is there something weird in the position? Oh, yeah, I, I guess, I guess this does kind of suck for you. Yeah, or even without the bishop there, even, like I guess there's also this sort of thing. Even, uh, even that. Okay. So, you try to do it this way? Yeah, this is kind of what I was looking then, at during the game. Then, 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 then there's would, this, yeah. right? Right. Okay. Okay. This is something to consider in the future. Uh, it's not easy to figure out what to do. And then once... So my plan was just I was going to uh, try to not give you the opportunity to win this knight with the token. And instead, I was going to try to trade it for this gold. Uh, or uh, have it support a token advance. And when yeah, the other thing that surprised me is when I put my knight in front of my pawn, you took it. Um, so... Uh, the knight in front of which, which one? Um, I guess it's back a little bit. Uh, where was it? Yeah, so... Oh, oh, here. Yeah, like, I played this because I didn't want my knight to disappear on the square it was on, but I didn't really see how I continue attacking here either. So, you're saying I don't have to take immediately. That's right. interesting. So, the reason why is because I, I, wanted, I, I, wanted, I wanted to get this going, but... Hmm, what can I do? So I just leave it here? And 
Yeah, so now now we go for Yagara. Yeah. And since you have this piece over here, it actually prevents you from pushing the pawn. That is really annoying, actually. Yeah. Okay. Don't take the knight. Okay, actually, uh, this happened to me uh, the other day. When, oh, oops, oops, what happened? What happened? Nope, that's too late. So, yeah, uh, this actually happened recently where someone dropped a lance on top of a pawn and then I just moved out of the way and then the lance was stuck there hmm. for a long time. Okay, so yeah, here, Yagara here, then you start trying to get back in. I'm not sure if uh, maybe here, like, I might be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, that looks pretty bad. Uh, what to do? So, just take gold. So, so this is the option that I have. So, this is one of the variations. Yeah, this is definitely one of the variations. So, you have a horse in the camp, and then, uh, well, it's not quite working yet. Then I gotta get this. Oh, wait, wait, what did I just do? What did I just do? I just did it wrong. Took rook rather than token. Yeah, so, sorry about that. This is an interesting variation. Sorry that we're getting a bit sidetracked, but... Uh, no, no. Here. Yagara. Then. And so you were just suggesting saying if you tried yeah, something this... like this. Then from here. From here, pawn drop. Takes. Bishop takes first. So, anyways, we were looking at... Okay, yes, bishop... So, this is the variation we were looking at. Bishop takes over here. Just finish this one. Okay, then... Pawn drop here. And here I missed, like, you could just move the rook over. Um, yeah, so. I, I saw that. So, I, I saw this, and then... That looks really good. Uh, there's not actually a good way to defend against this. So, this is what I would have played in the game. Okay, well, since this variation exists, it's not really worth looking at it any further. But there is the what if they drop pawn first thing. Right. Now, um, this doesn't support the advance anymore. Right, so I so, guess yeah, this temporarily slows that attack. Um, no, no, I can't even do that. I can't even do that. Uh, it's immediate. But yeah, maybe we just so go back now. I, so I have to go back, and then now this is here. Uh, ugh, uh, ha having having this here is a bit annoying. Um, so, I mean, it looks like you're threatening to take knight and then take this. Yes, and that is similar to. Okay, so that's basically what was played in the game, except I get a pawn. Yeah, and it actually matters, I guess, doesn't it? Having a pawn in hand at any point during the game would have been really big. I would have loved because that. Because then, like, you can drop it here and, if I get... Oh, except I'm in Yagara. Okay, okay, that's right. Oh, yeah, the Yagara's pretty I'm nice, in Yagara. too. So, I don't move. Okay. 
you start making threats. So if this is a pawn drop, I don't see what would be better than that. Uh, I mean, if you went back. Hmm. Uh, how far back do I go? <laughs> Uh, is there a knight sacrifice? I don't believe in this. Wait, it's complicated. Knight takes. Yeah, night tanks. Oh, well then, this would kind of suck. Oh, well, yeah. I missed that. Oh, wow. This this is still very complicated. I yes. don't know what... So what, what would you have done? Like, what do you think you would have done in something like this if I didn't take? Because you're uh, clearly reading it out. I was panicking this time. I'm not sure. Um, um, so, like, if I have to pick something... I, well, moving this goal just allows you to drop the bishop back here. Um, oh, here. I'll hand you the hat back. There you go. Oh, sure. So yeah, if I were to move this, you get a bishop drop right there, so that's not it. So what can I do? I have a pawn in hand, so I could consider, like if I'm desperate, I could consider something like this, but I don't see how this works. Um, uh, no, I, I don't think that does anything. I think it just gives me a pawn, right? Yeah, so like, what else can I try? Hmm. Yeah, I really don't know. Uh, like, during the game, I was considering trying to move this back and um, get my rook somewhere else to go. Or I guess another thing I was looking at during the game was, like, do I move the rook back here? But, like, this can't work. I don't know. It's tough to find a plan here. Yeah. Whereas, it seems like my plan is just kind of like, make moves that improve the position while continuing to threaten taking your knight. Yeah, it's nice how you built up this uh, beautiful pawn formation and I couldn't find any way to crack it. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So then the shocking move to you was like, oh, well, now my position... So we're, now you're thinking your position is good? When on Maybe. move 45, when I take the pawn or they take the knight, yeah, when you take the knight, suddenly I have a plan. Whereas up to that point, I've just been very confused. Yeah, I was so convinced that your plan to uh was, was to knight sack and push the pawn up that I, I got scared. Yeah, I had to have a good poker face about this. <laughs> Is pawn drop 7-3 still a motif? Yeah, I'm not sure what it even does, but... Like, it looks nice, but I have nothing else to drop. Oh, yes, yes. I wanted to fork something. I was like, oh, I can win material, but really, I can win it at any time. I should have been more patient. Making the king safe would be better. Yeah. Okay. I guess we both well, enjoy attacking. Big lesson. So at this point, you've got your clear Oh, yeah, uh, at this point, you've got your clear plan. 
And I think you're winning at this point. This is move 51. Okay. Uh, this is the point where we started getting into equality. Okay, yeah. So 51 was equality. Bad yeah, equality. This is this is very bad equality for me. So this is like the, this is where you have a very good plan for your position, and I just have like crazy stuff that somehow defends. This is not the position I want to be in. So from a practical human perspective, I think you're just totally winning. I mean, I agree, but I generally take the chaotic sides of these positions anyway. But um, yeah, no, you're right. It, it's, yeah, uh, I immediately screwed up. So I played the pawn up to try to get your token when moving the silver back was the better move. How long did I spend on this? I spent... Uh, sorry, 50. So here, I should have moved back, but instead I... So I spent 58 seconds thinking about it, so that was a panic move for sure. I really yeah. like wanted to think more about it. Yeah, so I was thinking about moving it back because that's something that uh, typically like helps a lot is if you move it back, it actually uh, takes the token away from the defense. I was also considering moving it forward to 7-4. Oh, huh. We're talking about this silver on 6-3, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 the reason why I wanted to do that was just to... Uh, get your uh, silver or your token away from my camp. So if it's on 7-4 instead of 6-3, uh, Well, yeah, six, see, three, that way you would be, be like spending a move to get my token maybe one square further away. Yeah, uh, and then the alternative would be to bring it back to 5-2 and then... Uh, yeah, uh, I was convinced you were going to do that, it, but... Yeah, so I was thinking that of doing that, and then I used up all my time and panicked and had to play a move, and I went for this, hoping it would confuse you. Sure. Uh, so what I think when I had played this move, I knew I was lost. Like, letting your token in is really bad. And at this point, it goes from like like a gigantic peak you, like it goes, I go from equal to like suddenly you're like totally winning for pretty much the rest of the game, except for there was a point where, you, uh, where the game was even almost. You were just slightly better. That was on mm -hmm. move seventy seven, actually. Yeah. So like even from here, I I understand that I promote, say, my dragon. I get to take a lance, but. Here, I was so, just perplexed. I don't usually get positions like this at all. This so is this is really crazy. Like, you, like the rook is a defensive piece, uh, and like there's generals in a weird formation, and I've got a weird like like pressure on the third file, and and at the same time I've got pieces in hand that may or may not do anything. A, a bishop, a gold, and a knight is like. Something that I normally am very happy to have in hand, but I can't yeah. really exploit the you know mate. So it's and I I understand like the engine cool. has one perspective about this, but this is not your everyday position. This is, I think, a difficult position to play. Uh, when in Bioyomi, yeah. Uh, on, on if if you are doing this kind of stuff where you're dropping the silver, um, instead of just going for the token plan, but yeah, it's. So now you gave me a, a general, and and you took the pawn over here. You didn't, at any point, you can start doing this. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, if I bring that over, then I can bring in more pieces next to it. So I guess that would make sense to use this token this way. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious what you were waiting for. Like, I just, like, so if, even if I bring the token closer, I didn't know, like, your silver just dodges, and what do I even do? I don't know. Yeah, um, at this point... At this point, since you let me have this, you're still totally winning. Yep. 
Yeah, totally winning. Okay, yeah, then there was one specific move that you made. On move 73. Okay, so. Here, this. This. Hmm. I wasn't really a fan of this one. Yeah. Like, as what you're pointing out, do? you need a gold to mate. So, I just so, didn't even know that. So like, here... Am I really threatening anything? Like, if you just do nothing? So I assumed this would happen, and then you would is take this, my is silver. This, is this a mate? No, I'm not. It's not a mate. I... I still don't have a mate. Hmm. So you're safe. You've got at least two moves. So because you've got two moves, you don't have to worry. But when you do this, you gave me a gold that you could have used to attack me. And now you've only got a silver. So it is tough. And you need, I think, at least two moves to check me. So you're, you've got your one, two, so there's no other good way to give a check. So that means uh, you've accelerated my attack somewhat by doing this. Yes. You just, you just wasted a move and you gave me a piece of And then if you take it back, well, now your king is closer. Right. Which can get dangerous. Uh, so with, what is, what is this saying? It's saying the best way, oh, the, the computer wants something different, of course, than what happened, but yeah, uh, the computer is obviously sensing danger and wants to start defending. Uh, and then this is what started, and, well, and, and it actually wants something actually else. When I actually did this it, capture, maybe I should have just put uh, my pawn back here to like deal with your bishop attack. That and like, force the knight uh, away or something, but it's maybe difficult. that may have actually done something. Uh, I'm sure that around this point you had like big regrets for allowing it to get this way. Yeah. Well, uh, up to this point, like the last 40 moves, I've been confused. So, I mean, I did find, like, yeah, I could promote my rook. I can take a lance. I can get a token kind of approaching your king. But, like, I don't know, one minute per move is still not very much time to figure out what's going on, even to regret anything. I was, uh, in some sense, I guess, happy to have gotten out of the opening and um, have some useful attack going, but I just struggled to evaluate with this. What did I do? I did. Oh, okay. You know what? I made a mistake. So I, I panicked while I was reading stuff out, but this is fine. And then from here, this is wrong. It's this. This is what I wanted to do. Oh. Yeah, and no, I was convinced either this or the knight would take there. So, yeah, this line is what I was going for, but I just didn't see a way to give a mate. Uh, but th this this is pretty scary looking for you yes. because you can give a check. That's the thing is that this is really hard to read out because it, I, I can't give you any Tempe and there is once, once you head over here, if you head over here, I thought you might do this. I do have a knight in hand and you can do this.
So that doesn't look like it works. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like I'm quite checkmating you. So I'm actually wondering if this is a threat mate. So let me see here really quick. So I wanted to drop that bishop just because I, I didn't think it would make a difference. But yeah, my original variation that I was planning out was actually taking with the gold. But yeah, yeah that's, it's that's what it's I subtle. expected to happen during the game. And okay, great. Okay, there. So that move that I did, the bishop drop. Yeah. was when it went from really complicated to I'm totally losing. And oh, I, I, see. I couldn't read it out. I couldn't read it out. Um, so, yeah, from this position... Or, wait, wait, wait. Uh, it was actually this way. I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, so, yeah, from here... Uh, let's see here. I've got the computer open just to consider it really quickly. Sure. Uh, it thinks that you're back. Oh, okay. So at this point, it wants me to start defending. So it doesn't have anything. And somehow I defend it. Yeah, that's, there's no way that a human could, like, or at least I, there's no way anyone other than Fuji, I think, could be able to, like, <laughs> calculate it out really fast. Well, well, pros are good. I shouldn't downplay yeah, them. Pros are yeah, really I can't do good. it. It's amazing. I can't do it. I can't tell the difference between this and this move. It's just too complicated. Uh, but I did know that I did not have a mate. Uh, and my whole plan completely depended on you not being able to find a mate basically so like i was looking at your side of the board like um like this tokian could be taken no and like i couldn't find a way to break into this castle i don't have a knight. oh glgr is a genius okay bishop to eight is mates yes this is the threat mates this is a threat mate right uh so if you go back with the other gold okay so one of these two this if you go here then wait bishop hey glgr are you in the no you're not in there Bishop two eight. Check. And then if you go up here, then I think what he's saying is that there is a mate. Yes, sack the bishop. If you go like this, it can't be good, I imagine. Because uh, you can do this. Ugh, uh, is this? Huh. Sack Rook. Sack Rook now, and then... Okay. 
Oh, okay. That it's not a check. Yes, it's not a check. So the point being is that you need to try to find a mate. So to go here, I'm thinking not sack. I wonder, could Rook take silver here? We, we want to go for a mate. We want to see if this is a threat mate, so... Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't see how this works. I mean, yeah, a mate is best, but, like, here taking the silver is a threat mate, right? Okay. Okay, and then... Then how does it work? Yeah, I just don't see it. Yeah. So from here, from this, it just seemed like you were escaping. So that's why. Hmm. Uh, if you went here, Is there something crazy here? So, a gold sack couldn't work, right? No, 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 I'm being crazy. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, there's no check here. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard. I'll have I'd have to look at this to find the variations. Uh, I I don't think I'm going to know what to do. So if you were uh, scared of a mate, I didn't see a mate, and then from your side, uh, from here, yeah, you just you just won. Yeah. So. How far did you see? So you saw that you can't do this, right? And now, clearly, this is my plan, right? And I'm going to try try to do something like this. And now you must meet me, right? And then, so you probably saw this far, and then then you've got these pieces. And then, what were you trying to seeing that? Well, so I have to give check the entire way through this. Um... Yeah. Because there's no way to block this. Right. So, like, okay, this is a check. Okay, and... Take it. And, yeah, I don't know, like... I mean, this is a check, but... So, then you need to see, is this a mate? Uh, yeah, this looks nice, but we need to see if this is actually a mate or not, but... So then, if I go over here, you've got a, uh, a mate, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, it should just be a st pretty straightforward mate. And then if you go over here, you've got a rook there, I think, as a mate? Yeah. Well, the king's trapped, so, like, a silver drop 2-2 two -two is mate in one. Well, over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the gold doesn't hit that. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And if we move back, then check. Mate? Yes. So I can't take the... Uh... So once we get to this point, I can't take the silver. Right. So then I have to run. Yeah, and then from here. And we have to run again. So yeah, here I can run up that way.
Oh, this would have been funny if you did this. If you had done this, yeah. Then you might have run out. Right. Yeah, no, that's certainly uh, so possible. This this is really complicated looking. So I mean if you tried this. Takes. Yep. Then what? Uh, I guess this is your only option, and then uh, block. Right. And then you've got check. Oh, huh. Uh, and then knights promoted. Oh, promoted knight. Promoted knight text. Pr promoted knight for text. Great, great. Okay. Oh, right, right. Promoted knight for text. Okay. So if I had taken with the promoted knight instead of the gold, potentially that could happen. That could have happened. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Spooky. Okay. So you would have to see that that doesn't work out and then instead play. Yeah, spectator the brave... pointed out this rook. Yeah, they're right. This is the way to mate here. Yeah, you play the, the brave rook drop. Yeah, and then we have this and yeah. I just completely missed this uh, rook drop idea. And then, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there. Yes. Yes, exactly. So if you didn't see the rook drop, is that the only way to win? I think it is. Because, so I think I likely, so because your bishop was here, I would not have taken. I would have run and hoped that it, I didn't get mated. Right. And the direction I would have run, I have to choose from here or here. Uh, yep. If I go, you have a silver in hand. So if I went here, you drop the silver. Then if I go over here, you drop the gold. Uh, well, let's just look at it really quickly. Here, silver, you're covered there. So then I go right. back. So then drop gold, takes, takes, drop. Knight, wow. Yeah. Wow, what? Does this, this work? This should work, right? Oh, huh. Uh... That'll do it. <laughs> this, this is, wow, wow. That's cool. Okay, uh, so if I go that way, you've got the silver, and then if I went the other way, and not one three, what? Why rook two two, and not one three? Oh, was there a better way? What did I do? Oh, of course, of course, rook one three is protected. Yeah, by the this knight. is what I was protected looking at just now. No, and. Yeah, if nothing else, there's this. Yeah, and that's actually double check. Yeah. So I have to take this way, and then you've got this. Right. Yeah, I, either either direction. Yeah. Okay. That's actually a little bit hard to see, but I might be able to read that out in 60 seconds. Um, then this way, if you did the gold... And I ran. Okay, yeah, uh, that that would have done it. But you had the rook in hand. Okay, so I don't practice enough Sumashogi to be able to see all this stuff ahead of time. So 
like I was clearly bluffing. Uh, and I'm <laughs> curious what would have happened if you went for it. Yeah, well, I think I would have had to find this Rook 2-2 two, two drop, and I don't know if I could have found it, but I had to. Yeah, yeah uh, so uh, you are, you've gotten really good in the past several months. Uh, I can, I have to play you even games. There's no way that I could give you any sort of a handicap anymore. So you, you've definitely gotten way better. If you don't feel like you're at showdown level yet, well, it, you are, you are, you made it. <laughs> There's yeah. just like certain points where both you and I are definitely still at like Q level that we right. tighten up. Yeah. And they, they happen to be different things. So it's very interesting playing games with you now. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And like, um, uh, I guess my initial impression on Shodan was like, it's supposed to be something like national master in the chess world where you just have this consistent top level performance, but that's, uh, I guess not what an amateur Shodan means. Um, no, just, there's still big room for improvement on everything. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, thanks for the game. Um, I hope to, uh, play you next week and maybe have something a little bit better prepared. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'll maybe have to take a closer look at some things you've played in the past and build something of a repertoire for to prepare for the I game. Have, <laughs> I've not played against Central Rook very much, so if you want to play Central Rook against me, you're going to not have a whole lot to work with. Okay, well, yeah. so, I mean, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to practice Central Rook, too. <laughs> yeah. Because so, I've been playing uh, def- a lot of fourth foul rook, and it's just been challenging defending a lot. And central foul seems more aggressive. Yeah, uh, I get a lot of people that play fourth foul rook against me, so I'm actually very comfortable with that. If, but central rook, I have nothing planned at all, so it definitely mm. like is a giant hole in my repertoire. So if you go for it and we try to like go into Joseki, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll both learn something next time we get paired. <laughs> yes. Uh, so is. I think I might have missed out on the ladder because I think it's too... Is it too late to play the other game? I didn't play my other game. Oh, yet. I forget. Uh, sometimes they extend it, but... Um... Okay. So um, at this point, um, I think I might either end this stream or if there's people that still want to do the uh, Tessaji problems... Uh, Oh, I can still play tomorrow. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll uh in that case I'm gonna end the stream and then um try to see if I can schedule a game with uh my other opponent. All right, yeah. Well best of luck with all that. Cool. Okay, thank thank you for the game. Yeah, have likewise. a good night. All right. Stuck out of the voice call. There we go. Um yeah, it was a good post-game analysis. Uh, yeah, what a challenging game. So, um, yeah, we're, we're both learning this together. Um, maybe we should play more of this bishop exchange sort of stuff, or maybe after this I could take a closer look at some of this. Um, what time is it right now? Oh gosh, it's late. Um, yeah, so we will be wrapping up momentarily. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty stressful game. Obviously at the end, I was stressed out enough that I just resigned the game, um, uh, rather than continue, uh, in that final position, like what I had read, um, was my king goes over here and read this, this, this. And I had concluded that I don't have a mate. Um, yeah, because I was looking at this, 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 and I'm like, there's just no way that this mates. Um, so I went down this rabbit hole, um, but I missed, like, and I saw if I play this, like, I'm getting mated over here. Um, it's like, that's the threat. And I don't have a good way to combat this threat, because a rook or a bishop don't do anything about that. Um, I mean, even if I place a silver here, um, it felt like that's a futile drop. So, yeah, like, 
I have to mate. There's no question here. I don't have time for anything else. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, and when I resigned, this is, I mean, I've been looking. Uh, I got this far, then looked at this and looked at this. And my conclusion is I just cannot checkmate here. Um, I don't know, I've played a lot of Bug House. And there's some similarity here where I have some idea of when I need my partner to get me another piece. And here, I just don't have the right piece to mate. It's just, I cannot continue checking forever. So I did read this out, but um, Spectre, I think Pawnhub correctly pointed out, yeah, this is just clearly the way to do it. Um... And then we take here, take there, that's check. And, oh, I mean, we looked at this during our post-game analysis. Um, yeah, we looked at all of this, although we did a rook drop here, but anyway. Um, yes, yeah, it's clearly the right way to bout it. And I just did not see this at all. But, yeah, I'd mentioned several times that I've been panicking since, oh, where was it? Even before I entered Bioyami. Um, yeah, like here, I just had no idea what to do. None at all. Like, I need to build up a castle, fine. I need to put my rook somewhere active, sure. But, um, yeah, this just had me so surprised. And maybe what I should do, just in general, is play more Bishop Exchange until I get some kind of feel for how this works. Um, or maybe just play more teaching ladder games and <laughs> experience uh, game after game and eventually come up with a good idea and then stick with that. But no, probably just follow what Pawnhub was suggesting and um, take a look at games from Wandan players where they play Bishop Exchange and see what do they do. Don't focus on, like, how does a 5-down or a 6-down play this. Look at, like, what fellow players at this level do and what they've studied. Um, that could be an interesting thing to do here. Um, how's a castle built? You basically stick these generals right next to your king, and you claim that they're all defending each other and defending everything else, and you call that a castle. You just put the pieces next to your king, and pretend that it's secure. And if you can bluff your opponent enough, um, they'll believe it's secure. Um, yeah, I'm working on coding. Uh, really, Telmarch is doing almost all of the coding, but I'm contributing a little bit to playshogi.com. Um, so that's slowly evolving. That's a good learning resource. But Shogi Harbor's Twitch channel... Uh, and our Discord are both good resources. You'll find several Shogi Discords if you just search around. Or if you just uh, watch people live stream, they'll recommend some. Uh, uh, but yeah, I was just so perplexed, all of this. Um, this pawn move was probably a little gratuitous. It does stop my bishop from going here. It certainly does that, but... Does my bishop even want to go there? Uh, like, yeah, I claimed in our post-game analysis, yes, my plan um, was uh, this bishop drop. Honestly, I didn't see this until after having walked into um, this position. It was like in my very last second where I was pushing this pawn. It finally dawned on me that this might be an idea. And even then, I didn't really believe that it would be there for very long, because you just play this, and um, suddenly, like, the whole idea vanishes. Um, now this might introduce some new problems, but still. So, yeah, I... Uh, it's just difficult to break through these really solid... I mean, this is a nice castle. I was not too happy with my castle, and not happy with my gold being there, and my rook being here, and my silver being off in no man's land. 
maybe it would have served me better to play something more familiar. Uh, get the silver over here. You know, that's like super slow. Um, maybe I should just change my entire strategy a little bit. Um, where I brought this gold up. Maybe that was completely unnecessary. I'm not saying that, like, I can push this silver here, because this just invites a bishop drop. Although maybe that's fine, too. No, it's not. It's complicated, but I don't think it's fine. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing that's quite different in Shogi, other than the way the pawns move, is uh, that the knights don't go backwards. And so you'll see almost every game I'll end up losing a knight somewhere because I got impatient and moved it forward and it forced to move it forward again. And then I have to give it up under some unfavorable circumstance. Um, okay, we have more comments in this chat room. What's the comment this time? Oh, panic left. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so I'm wrapping up soon here, too. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I did see that video about speed and such. Um, what was I thinking? I don't even know anymore. So I placed... I dropped the general and I took here. And while that was all very exciting, that just upgraded my silver to a gold. And took away the gold that, ironically, he claimed he needed in the end to checkmate me. Um, so this might have been a, a very good exchange, but I needed to follow it with another good move. And, um, yeah, I was just... I look at this, and I'm thinking, gosh, there's no way I can break this. Um, but evidently it's doable somehow. Like, I don't know. Shogi's hard. But, yeah, what a wild game. So, yeah, I'll have, there will be many more games if I continue playing Shogi, and I presume I will. There will be many opportunities to continue using tokens. It's uh, earlier today I got a lesson about don't just give up my token for a pawn in order to promote. Here, I guess the lesson is don't be afraid to give it up for a general if it helps me continue the attack. Um, which sounds like a common sense thing, but I guess has to be said for me to understand it. Um, let's see. Was it more wild than Cactar's game? Um, well, you have to check the video to see that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no. That the Cactar game was really insane. That's the one where I got that extra rating point to get me from 1499 to 1500. That was... Just insane. And I don't know that I can replicate that performance anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was special. Um, um, yes, I'm trying to remember. Again, I did mention the name of this uh, 7 Don Pro. I don't want to get it wrong. Um, oh, Katagami. Uh, he's the one who had played against um, Shaiman and the Llama Lord in their handicap simul yesterday. Um, yeah, I have his book about which pieces do you need to mate. I should strongly consider reading it, because my goodness, do I need that. Um, that's funny. In the final position, uh, uh, Time Zombie Panic is just saying, um, yeah, of course I need a gold to mate you. I'm like, what? Wait, how do these checkmate things work again? 
uh, I was so convinced. Like, I've seen so many similar positions where it's just mate on the spot. So, yeah, I, I should probably read some more. I should probably do play shogi a bit more. Put down the keyboard and take up the shogi bon and just learn something for once. But it was an exciting game anyway. Yeah, it looks like a fantastic book. It's a wonderful concept. Even if, like, the book were to suck, and I don't think that's not possible for a pro of that high level to make a book that um, he would be unhappy with. So, like, I'm sure it's a fantastic book, but even if it sucked, it's an excellent concept. Just, like... The idea that here's going to be a variety of positions and you'll be looking at that and figuring out like which combinations of pieces would be better than other combinations and then from that you can back up and figure out in your own games like should i be exchanging pieces here and which pieces should i exchange yeah katagami anyhow uh yeah thanks everybody for joining us for this post game analysis uh, thanks to Pawnhub for explaining some of these sume, because I just didn't believe this was here at all, and I was completely mistaken. Could I have found it in Bioyomi? Maybe. Do I care? Um, I don't know. Like, this is a uh, teaching ladder game. The whole point is that we're supposed to learn something from the game. I don't so as such, even though it's rated, um, I'm not so attached to the result as I would be in, I don't know, a tournament game or something where there's a greater stake on the line. Somehow I just find that it's, at some point, like, it's just weird. With these teaching ladder games, I find it difficult. Um, even though I am attached to, like, how I play even in this final position, resigning into one position, I, I, somehow I'm just not attached to the result. If I were, I probably wouldn't be te playing so many teaching ladder games, because I've lost most of them. Um, yeah, the rook drop is a very nice move. And without it, I don't think there's anything there. But anyway, and this is, like, that end game is what interested the spectators the most. And... I mean, there's only so much we can memorize about this opening or learn about it. And they say you can only be good at the opening, but you can be great in the end game. Fine. But I would like to not suck at openings. And so that's why I'm playing stuff that I don't know, so I can broaden my horizons a bit. Um, I mean, I had some experience playing Central File Rook, but we didn't get there at this game. We actually got a, a sideline, which is exciting. Um, if I really wanted to avoid this, um, could have spent more time figuring out if this is even playable. And so one thing I considered was this, but like, this should just work. I guess. I have no idea. I mean, I've seen this recommended before, but, um, And, yeah, I guess this is supposed to be fine. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but no, bishop exchange is totally fine, too. So if I were dead set on avoiding bishop exchange, I could have avoided it. But I wanted this to be possible, this game, because there are many times that I do offer this. And I want to be prepared sometime in the event that my opponent does take. Um, I did watch one video about this, I think, on Hidechi's channel. Um, and clearly I don't remember most of it. Um, so it wouldn't hurt if I were to go review that again. But yeah, this is it's good to have a chance to play this. Um, it's good that this teaching ladder exists. Um, so yeah, even though, like, that took me right all the way back down to 1500, 
and my next game will be a demotion game and you know I'll go up and down and up and down um but apparently everybody thinks I'm ready for this so that's exciting we'll play the yeah I might sign up for the tourney to master when that enrollment opens I think um I'll have some chance in all the games. It's going to be even more brutal than my tourney to showdown games have been. Um, yeah, I've had some just really painful losses in that. Um, but, you know, I uh, can only lose one game per round, right? So eventually there comes a point where... Um, even if I lose all the games in the tourney to master, it's still okay. Because I can still play other games. Um, I don't think Supernova wants players rated over 1500, so I should probably not join that again. Um, I might join whatever show Yee Hall's doing, uh, just to have some games to play. So right now I've probably overcommitted too many tournaments. Supernova ends by the end of the month, and... Then we'll see whatever tournaments I end up playing next. But that might give me more time for coding or more time for learning stuff. Anyhow, yeah, thanks uh, everyone for watching. And have a good day. Have a good night.